Is it working now? Now, 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 now. Okay, good deal. All right, it's working. It should be moving that little. All right, good deal. I wasn't sure if it was or not. I can't tell from up here if, if I can. If I can't really hear it, but that way they can hear it on Facebook. All right, Second Samuel, you don't have to stand tonight. Second Samuel chapter 13, where we'll start in our series on the life of David. And I'll tell you what, uh, we remember last week uh, in, ver in chapter 12, uh, we had the birth of Solomon and um, where David lost his child. And we see here, I don't know how many years have passed. I meant to actually look that up from chapter 12 to 13. But we find here that the, uh, the judgment uh, or consequences to the sin that David had committed, the judgment that was passed upon his home didn't take long. Uh, we find here in chapter 13 that uh, it says Ammon's sin, uh, Ammon's sin, uh, David's son. Uh, it happens pretty quick, uh, really. So I'm, a think, I'm thinking, I don't know the age difference between Absalom and Solomon, uh, but uh, chapter 13 kind of goes right into it, and we see uh, the downfall and the... And the um, uh, as, as Nathan said, the sword, there'll never be no peace in the home of David. And man, we can see that starting right here. Chapter 13, verse number 1, where we'll start. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was so, so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and Amnon taught, thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for another opportunity to stand. God, I thank you for this word. And Lord, just ask you to help us to teach this tonight. And uh, Lord, that we can see the examples here in the life of David and Lord, help us to understand that there is a consequence for the way that we live our lives, even after we're saved. And God, I pray that we can all learn by these things. And God, I thank you for the example that you showed us and the teaching that we've got out of this. God, I pray that it's a, been a blessing to the people that's been coming, the ones that are faithful to show up here uh, every Wednesday night. God, I thank you for them. And those that may be watching by Facebook that work too late and just couldn't uh, get here, uh, God, I thank you for that, that the ministry for that, that, that the, the, those that may be watching will get something out of your lesson tonight. We love you, praise you, and thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now we see here the consequences, as I said, to David's fallout didn't take long. As I said, I don't know how many years had passed uh, from uh, chapter 12 to 13, if any at all, but we find the very first part of 13 tells us that David had a, or, or David's son Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Now, I don't know if you, if you look back on it, that may have been his, Amnon's half-sister or whatever, but it was still his sister. It's funny how the Bible said that it was Absalom's sister. Well, it was Amnon's sister as well. But I'll show you as we get through this to show you something about that. And I've always said this, and it's so worth mentioning again, especially with this scripture that we're going to, this chapter we're going to look at tonight. Y'all remember uh, me bringing this up, that one generation's compromise will become the next generation's captivity. And we see it clearly here with David's son, Amnon. Because here's why. David always had trouble. He always had women trouble throughout his whole life. David never really knew how to, how to love a woman. As a matter of fact, we find that David's uh, uh, relationship that he had with Jonathan, it said the Bible said that, that that love surpassed the love of a woman. And I believe it was because David never understood how to have a relationship with women. If you find throughout the Bible all the women and the, and the wives that he had, even all the way up to his death, David had trouble with women. And as I say, that was his compromise on the sin with Bathsheba 
and it turned into captivity for his son, Amnon. Amen. And that's what we find here, that he had lust for his own sister. I mean, I can't imagine anything uh, just more gross than that. I mean, let's just be honest. Uh, that, but now I know back then that there was a little bit different setting or whatever. And it's like I said, may have been his half sister or whatever, but it's still yet, yeah, it's still his sister. But David always, as we said, had trouble uh, with women. Uh, and I believe that the Amnon's head is so messed up that he's lusting after his own sister. It said he loved her. And I'd like to say the translation of that would be lusted after her is what it was. She was a fair sister. It said he had a fair sister, means she was a, a beautiful woman or a beautiful girl. Verse number two said, And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for her, for his sister Tamar. He is so possessed in his mind that he can't focus on anything else but her. That's why the Bible said, so vexed, it said. He was controlled every day, every waking thought he had for her. He was possessed, uh, so to speak, in his mind over his sister. So that goes to show you, and it proves true, that one generation's compromise will become the next generation's captivity. Amen. I have to say that we've seen that in, in our own family, that uh, that our uh, my generation, my father's generation, had issues with alcohol, and the next generation, which was my generation, uh, had even worse issues than that in some of our lives. So uh, it does work like that. So we have to be careful and understand that what we do does have an effect on the next generation. Verse number three, but Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab and uh, the son of Shema, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. He was sneaky is what he was. And verse number four said, and he said unto him, why art thou being the king's son lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. My brother Absalom's sister. Notice how he just how he's justifying it in his own mind. You catch that? He said, I'm in love with Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Oh, really? Big boy, whether you know it or not, that's also your sister. But do you see how he's justifying that in his mind? Now, as I said, I don't know who his mom was and who her mom was. We could go back and probably find that. But nevertheless, we know that the Bible said that that is his sister. So I don't know if it's his, his whole sister, half sister, what the case may be there. But the Bible does say that it was his sister. So he's justifying it right here uh, when he's telling Jonadab, he said, I'm in love with Absalom's sister, my brother. Abs I don't even sound, that sounds funny. He said, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Really? Okay, so that what's that mean? What's that tell you just by him saying it? But it really, like I said, is his sister as well. But you see what happens when we try to justify our own sin, or we try to justify something that we're doing. We'll, 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 we'll find ways around it in our own mind to help us feel better about what we're doing or what we're not doing, and, and that's what happened here. Uh, he's trying to find ways around it to say it's not uh, uh, off at all or it's not sick or gross. Uh, he's justifying it by the way, saying that it's Absalom's sister. Amen. So it's funny how... When we get our mind off and how Satan, when he creeps in, how he can get you so messed up that you'll actually think that you're right in what you're doing. Amen. And we see that many times, even in people's lives and people that we've known. We've watched them get out of God's will and see that they justify their life by blaming it. Most of the time, they blame it on somebody else. It's their fault because they got out of God's will when it all has to do with them. Verse number five says, And Jonadab said unto him, 
lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar. Now, he, he's saying right there that it's his sister, uh, Jonadab is saying, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that I may see it and eat it at her hand. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat at her hand. Now David, of course, didn't think nothing odd of this. I'm sure they had a close family, and he thought, well, I'm going to stay here. Uh, he may have liked something that she cooked or the way uh, she may have been a good cook or whatever. So David didn't think anything of that. And, and they would do things like that in this day. But I guarantee if David knew uh, what he had his mind on, he wouldn't have sent his daughter up there. Verse number 7 tells us, says, Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house and dress him meat. So we see here that they are of age or adults. Now, I don't know about Tamar, what her age was, but I believe Amnon, with having his own home, would probably be a young man above age or whatever. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was laid down, and she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and did bake the cakes. And she took a pan and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Have out all men from me. And they went out, every man from him. So all the servants and everybody that was in there, he sent them away so he could be alone with Tamar. And Amnon said to Tamar, Bring thy meat into the chamber uh, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she'd, she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. Wow. And she answered, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. She's trying to warn him. She said, Don't, this is awful. Don't let this happen. Look here at 13. And I, and she said, And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for, check this out, for he will not withhold me from thee. You see what she's doing? She's saying, if this is what you want, do it the right way. She's actually saying, go ask. So they may have been half brother and sister, I don't know, and maybe they would marry back then. I don't I have no idea. It seems to me that it was she's trying to get out of this situation. He says, she says, do this the right way. Go to the king. What she's saying, go to the king and ask for my hand, basically, in marriage. And she said, he won't deny me from thee. But understand something. The Bible said there earlier, and as I said, you could translate it into lust, said that he loved her. He lusted after her is what it was. He didn't have any love for her at all because if he had of loved her in that way, in the manner that a man should, he would have done it the right way and went to the king and said, hey, I'm in love with her. She's half-sister, whatever, if he could justify it to the king. And, and she said, he won't deny me. He will not deny me. And understand, young women back then, especially the king's daughters that were virgins, would wear certain apparel that would communicate to everybody. As I said, they dressed back then. What they would wear would tell you who they belonged to, and it would tell you a lot about them. So she would have on a certain uh, apparel that would communicate to everyone that this was a young virgin woman uh, uh, that hadn't been married, that wasn't married as of yet. So it communicated a lot, which she was from the royal line. So it also communicated she was one of the king's daughters that was a young virgin. And, and this was a big deal back then. And that's what she was trying to tell him. Uh, she said, and she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not this folly. Uh, let's see here. Back up. 
eat, come on. Eat. She said, and I, whither shall I call? She said, and I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? She said, if you do this to me, it's not, it's not just going to mess you up. It's going to mess me up. Because people back then, when they got married, this is isn't this an odd thing. They expected the women to be virgins, amen, uh, to save themselves for marriage, which I think is still a very good practice. Young ladies and young men, that's okay to do that. I know that we're in the 21st century, and oh, God forbid uh, that, you, that you say that, but it's still a very good practice, amen. But anyway, she says here, my shame, and this would have been very shameful for a young lady in her day. I, I, I dare to say, even though it wasn't her fault, the way the men were in her day, she would have been kind of an outcast as far as someone to marry. That she would have been what they would consider tainted goods. Isn't that a shame? And, and her being, it wasn't her fault at all, but it didn't matter. That's the way people would look at her. And that's what she's saying. I'm saving myself as a woman should, and you should do that. What she's doing is she's trying to talk sense into him. But I'm going to tell you something. Once you get so deep in sin, you don't listen to nobody. I mean, once you get your mind on something, that's why I tell y'all, you young people, listen to me. Once you let yourself go so far, it's hard to turn around. You need to keep yourself as pure as you can, keep a pure heart so that way and stay as close to God as you can because once you get in so deep, it's hard to turn back. Listen, Satan is tricky and his devices are slick, man. So you got to be careful. And I want the young people to especially hear that tonight. So she tells him, she said, if we're going to do this, let's do it the right way. Now, I don't know if she was just saying that to try to get away from him and get back. And then, you know, then she'd be all right once she got back to her daddy and she would tell her daddy what his intentions were for her. And that would have put a stop to it. So that may have been the case. Don't misunderstand. I don't think she probably didn't want to marry her brother. That's a little weird, all right? But she said, let's do this the right way. If you're going to do it, let's do it the right way. She said, the king will not withhold me from thee. Amen. So anyway, we see uh, what's happening here uh, is a horrible, horrible deal. Verse number 14, she says, How be it he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. He basically forced himself upon his sister. What a shame. Do you see, the, the, as Nathan said, there'll not be no peace in your home? We see here the unsettling in David's home. because Now, could you imagine to be the father or the mother of these two and get word of what's happened? That your, that your son forced himself and, and actually raped your, his sister, your daughter. I, I can't even imagine what that would have done to David as a parent. Amen. So we see that the unsettling of his home, uh, there was no peace for sure. And it gets deeper than this. It gets bad. How be it he would not hearken unto her, but being stronger than her, uh, forced her to lay with him. Look here. Then Amnon, check this out. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. See, he had this lust for her, and once his needs were met, he hated her after this. I mean, he was, he was, he was possessed. His mind was messed up. And I think, honestly, he probably felt shame as well. But he allowed that, uh, that lust and that possession to push him over the edge thinking that he was going to feel a certain way and ended up after it was over. He hated her, the Bible said, exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. said he hated her more than the possession that he had to start with. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. I mean, isn't that a way to treat her after what's done? Look here. She said unto him, him there is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. What she's saying is, we're connected now. 
and you can't just throw me out because I'll be no good for anybody else. She knew how the people thought in her day. She said, now you're just going to throw me away? And that's what he did. He threw her out. Then he called his servants that ministered unto him and said, put now this woman out for me and bolt the door after her. Man, I'm telling you what's the truth. You talk about a messed up individual. This boy right here is fouled up bad. I mean, he is really messed up. And she had a garment, as I told you, and she had a garment of divers colors upon her, for with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparelled. Then his servants brought her out and bolted the door after her. So, as I told you, they were dressed a certain way. So you knew it was the king's virgin daughters when you seen them come through town. And Tamar, look here, and Tamar, this is pitiful. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of diapers colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. It wasn't her fault. But do you see the shame that he's put on her? She's, she's put ashes on her head, which was a sign of repentance, as if she, something she had done. Listen to me. Hey, it's not the woman's fault, all right? If somebody forces, it's completely on him. And they ought to string them up in the woods somewhere and let the alligators have their way with it, as far as I'm concerned. Or let me have my way with them, put it that way. Verse 20, now catch this. As any brother would do, this is how I would have felt. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Hath Amnon thy brother been with thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. Thank God she had a good family member. Notice that, man. He, it's like he's seen her and knew what had happened. And he said, hey, don't tell nobody. You stay here till you get your thoughts and get yourself together until you heal up and, and things of that nature. Look here. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very wroth. I told you, man, I'm telling you. And Absalom spake unto his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister Tamar. I'd say so. And it came to pass... After two full years, man, this past two full years, so all this hatred and bitterness in the home of David, his house with his brother hating each other and what had happened to his sister, two full years. Before. So think of the tension there that was in this home for all this time in this house. It says, and it came to pass two full years, and Absalom had sheep shears in Belhazar, which is beside Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold now, thy servant hath sheep shears. Let the king, I beseech thee, and his servants go with thy servant. And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not, let us not all now go, lest we be chargeable unto thee. And he pressed him, howbeit he would not go, but blessed him. Then Absalom if not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. He's trying to set Amnon up. And the king said unto him, Why should he go with thee? But Absalom pressed him that he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Mark ye now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine. This was a big event that they would do here uh, with the sheep shares. And when I say unto you, smite Amnon, then kill him, fear not, have not I commanded you. Be courageous and be valiant. And the servants of Amnon did unto Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and every man got him up upon his mule and fled. And it came to pass, while they were in the way, the tidings came to David, saying, Absalom hath slain all the king's sons. Now, that didn't happen. He killed Amnon, 
but he didn't kill them. Look, notice how those rumors spread around, and they thought, now I don't know if they thought since they all fled if he was after all of them or not, and maybe they didn't see where they ended up, and he thought, well, he's run them down and killed them too. That may have been the case, so I don't know. But it's funny, it got back to David that all of his kids sunk. Could you imagine? See the unsettled, the, 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 see how unsettled his home is? All because I wonder how many times I got to think about this as I was studying this. I wonder how many times David thought this is my fault. I wonder how many times he looked at it and said, you know, if I could have just controlled myself. Because Nathan told him, so because this is sort of never leave your home, there'll never be no peace in your home again after this mess. So therefore, uh, David seen. Uh, or thinks now that all of his kids are, are, are done for, or the king's sons. Then the king arose and tore his garments and lay on the earth, and all his servants stood by him with their clothes rent. And Jonadab, the son of Sheman, David's brother, answered and said, Let not my lord suppose that they have slain all the young men of the king's sons, for Amnon only is dead. For by the appointment of Absalom, this hath been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. Could you imagine getting all that news at once? Wow. I'm telling you what's the truth. You know what? Sometimes we, we find stuff out and 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 it and it just it just messes your whole week up or your whole I mean, think about stuff like this. I mean, I couldn't imagine getting this kind of news. I mean, it's hard enough to handle stuff that, that comes in our day, troubles that we have. But imagine what David was going through, having to hear all this. First, he thinks all of his king's sons, all of his sons are dead. Then he gets word said, no, not all of them are dead, just one of them. And it's by the hand of Absalom because he commanded him, he had set him up because of what he did to your daughter Tamar. Oh, okay, well, that makes it all better. I mean, it's still a horrible deal, man. So he says in, uh, in verse 33, now, therefore, let not my lord the king take this, take the thing to his heart to think that all the king's sons are dead, for Amnon only is dead. Well, that, it's still one of my kids. But Absalom fed, fled, and the young man that kept the watch lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there came much people by the way of the hillside behind him. And Jonadab said unto the king, Behold, the king's sons come as thy servant said, so it is. So no doubt there was some relief to David. I mean, it's one thing to think that they're all dead. It's still bad enough that Amnon had to die. But the thing about it is he sees his boys coming home. So this was somewhat of a relief to find out they're all dead and then to get the news, oh, here they come. Everything's cool. It's still bad, but not as bad, of course, as it could have been. And it came to pass, as soon as he made an end of speaking, that, behold, the king's sons came and lifted up their voice and wept. And the king also and all his servants wept very sore. But Absalom fled and went to Talma, the son of Amahud, king of Geshur. And David mourned for his son every day. He cried because here Absalom had to flee because of what he had done to Amnon. And he cried, of course, for Amnon. And I'm sure he cried for Tamar as well. You know what I was thinking when I read this? There's some things that are worse than death. And it's one thing to know that what I've done in my past or whatever, and thank God for Jesus, man. He forgives us of those sins. But we know that there can be consequences to the life that we live. But I want you to know something. It's one thing to know stuff's going to happen to me, but when my kids got to suffer for it, Tammy, I, that's a hard one. Guys, that y'all got, everybody in here just about got kids, man. That's, that's tough to know that your kids suffer. So no doubt, David mourned for his son every day. Wow, that got me. So Absalom fled. I mean, think about this now. In, the, in this setting, nothing good would have come out of this. And Amnon was the start of all of it. <laughs> Even though we know that David, yes, because of what David did, this peace, uh, would ne he'd never have no peace in his home and the sword would never leave his house. I get all that. But Amnon was a grown man. 
that made a choice to do what he did. He had warning signs to stop him along the way, even through Tamar. She said, let's do this the right way. If this is what you want to do, let's do it the right way. The king will not deny me from thee. He will not keep me from thee. Let's do it right. He ignored her. He did it, went, went on through with his lust. Let me tell you something. A lot of times, something that, that possesses our mind, especially when it's something for the wrong reason, you young people listen, when it's something that just that we think we got to have, no matter what, I don't care if I'm breaking the law, I don't care if I'm breaking God's law, I've got to have it. Once you get it, you'll find out that the lie from Satan that makes you think it's all that, and a box of chocolates. Once you get what you think you wanted, when it's something that's not going good for you anyway, or that's bad, or that causes you to sin, or break the law, or whatever, you'll come to find out it ain't near what you thought it was going to be. When it's over, you'll be like, why did I, I do all that to do this, and, and it wasn't what I thought. Satan's lies makes it seem like it's just the best thing no matter what it is, I don't know what it can be, but anything that, that comes between you and God and you think, oh, I've got to have this, I've got to have this, I've, I've just got to do it, and it controls everything, you'll come to find out if you get what you wanted, what you thought you wanted, you'll come to find out that it ain't near what you thought it was going to be. The lie's always better than the actual product, put it that way, when it comes to sake. So, don't forget that. Don't fall for his lies because there's going to be a day that the kings of the land and everybody's going to look upon him and they're going to say, we fell for that? Over in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel he said, we fell for th He's the guy that tricked everybody in all the lands and all the kings. How in the world? Exactly. And that's what happens when you go through with something or you do something wrong and there's something you think you got to have that gets you out of God's will and takes you down the wrong path. You'll come to find out the grass ain't always greener. It might be greener, but it's just as hard to mow. And everything that glitters is not gold, let me just tell you. All right, so that's what happened here to Amnon. But Amnon made a choice. What he did with Tamar caused divide in, the, in, the, in David's household, caused Absalom to, to be enraged by it like most brothers would be and killed him because of it. Killed his own brother, his own flesh and blood, had him, had him murdered because of it. So I'm sure even after all this, see, you can't, two wrongs don't make a right, ever. And Absalom did this and thought, you know what? I've got to take care of him, and he did. And now Absalom is fled. So here David now is suffering the grief for all this. And we're done. But David's suffering the grief for all this. He's, he's pretty much lost his daughter. She's, I bet her mind and everything about her is so messed up because she was one of the king's virgin daughters, and now that's not so anymore. So she's messed up. He's comforting her probably every day. He's mourning over his son Amnon being dead. He didn't even get to tell him bye, that he loved him one last time. And now Absalom, his other son, has fled, and he's on the run. And here David is sitting there for this grief. No wonder the Bible said that David mourned for his son every day. Every day he mourned for him. Sounds a lot like the prodigal, don't it? Amen. That Absalom's gone. This last verse, last two verses, and I'm done. So Absalom fled and went to Geshur and was there three years. Three years David had to suffer through all this. And the soul of King David longed to go forth unto Absalom, for he was comforted concerning Amnon, seeing he was dead. Three years Absalom was gone. He didn't get to talk to him. And you know, there were so many questions by David saying, we probably wanted to ask him, why didn't you come to me? Why didn't we could have we could have worked this out and 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 brought him to uh, justice and, and why didn't you come to me that you slay your own brother over this which was I understand that you was enraged but you should have come to me you see the see the un, see the undivided in his home he's so messed up that's what sin brings it brings division in your home it, it brings a lot of mess that you can't clean up it's just it's just awful so we'll pick right back up there uh next week all right let's pray father we thank you so much 
for this time. We thank you for this study. God, I pray if nothing else that our young people can learn through some of these stories to understand that sin always operates the same way. It always leaves us desolate and hopeless and just wanting more. And God, I pray uh, that our young people get this in their heart to help them to understand that uh, the only good life is the one to live for Jesus. And God, I pray that we can relay that to them and that they see that, that they don't uh, get to the place where they think they can't wait till they get old enough to leave the church. And God, I pray that we can hang on to ours and that they just pick right up and stay in here with us and keep going strong for you. We love you, praise you, and thank you for all you do. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. You're dismissed.